Welcome, Coral Reef Aquarium School Basic. Today is our 14th episode and we start talking about corals and we will, the first one out are the mushroom corals. Now, first, before talking about corals, I'll share one of the indicators I'm using to, uh, that indicates to me that this tank is mature and it's mature for corals. I think this is an indication that it is healthy. And I check the coralline algaes on the rock, the colonies, and on the perimeter, there start to appear a white line. This white line is uh, an indication that calcification has uh, started to occur in the reef aquarium. And that is a sign of the tank reaching balance. And as you see here on the picture, I see signs that calcification has begun so I think we're ready for corals. It is one indication. Now the mushroom corals, there are different genuses of uh, the mushroom corals commonly available in the trade. You see here three examples and um, these examples they are commonly available and they come in all types of colors and a lot of different patterns. Now about this coral, the benefit is starting with the care. Most of the species they are easy. Few of the rare species they can be difficult, but the commonly available in the trade they are very easy. And then also these corals can be kept in less pristine conditions, which is also a benefit. The light conditions is low to moderate intensity and quality and uh, the flow low to moderate uh, water flow. And um, in the coral reef, corals, they fight over space and they use different techniques. And this type of coral, they have the competitive advantage of speed. They try to outgrow their competition and grow over nearby coral, corals to shield them for uh, sunlight because corals need sunlight to photosynthesize and get energy so that is how they can stress out their competition and also if there is a storm and parts of the reef break off the mushroom corals can go there and populate uh, rather quickly and that is competitive advantage the placement is typically on the bottom of the tank this type of coral and how it reproduces because hopefully it will give it conditions so it reproduces how it reproduces is that the coral is typically a disc and there's a stem connected to the rock but in the middle of the disc there is a small dot and this is the mouth typically when it reproduces you will see that there has appeared two mouth and these mouth they uh, start pulling apart and eventually you start seeing a waste forming on the uh, the disc and then after that you will have two polyps of this mushroom coral so it is reproducing in the coral reef aquarium by division okay signs of stress for this coral in the upper right you'll see a colony of uh, lysosoma doing well the corals inflate when the light come on and they stay, stay well inflated. They shrink but they still stay well inflated uh, when the reef aquarium goes dark. But in the bottom uh, you see uh, these colonies after prolonged stress. And what happens is they start looking not so well inflated. They don't inflate properly and also this uh, when it looks like this, it can be accompanied by some of uh, the uh, corals. They actually start letting it go. So they go away from the rock they're placed, just to go out anywhere, to find somewhere better to, uh, to sit with better water conditions. Temporary stress for this colony uh, or coral can be okay. So for instance, when you handle you can see a white thread coming out of the mouth. This is uh, typically the intestines and it will pull it back once you stop, uh, st 
stressing it. Um, but the prolonged stress is what you need to be counteracting. Now, if you see signs of prolonged stress, I think first aid is to do multiple water changes uh, to rule out the possibility of unbalanced water being the root cause to why they look perky. And what's important here is that when you do uh, water changes, uh, make sure that your uh, salinity meter is calibrated because if it's not calibrated, you might in parallel to the water changes increase or decrease salinity and that will create stress on your corals. And we don't want to, uh, when, when the corals are um, stressed, you don't want to introduce, introduce more stress. Okay. Just some basic math about uh, water changes. If you run into problems with unbalanced water conditions and you do a 50% water change, which is a lot, and you also need to be aware that 50% can cause additional stress to your system. So you have to uh, think about that as well. But doing a 50% water change, you will naturally keep 50% of the problem problematic water as well. And 50% of problems might still be enough to bug the corals. And then what happens is the good and the bad water will mix and uh, diffuse together. Now, if you continue to do yet another 50% water change, uh, you will remove 25% uh, of the good water and 25% of the bad water, as they were perfectly mixed. So you will then naturally keep 25% of the problematic water in your aquarium. Third time you do a 50% water exchange, then you will keep 12.5% of the problematic water. And somewhere here, you should start seeing signs of improvements of your coral, if water conditions and water imbalance is the root cause. Somewhere between 12.5 and 6.25, there is where you should see an improvement. If you run into problems, I recommend starting with uh, water changes, uh, somewhere 25 to 50%. If you, if you suspect uh, water to be unbalanced. If it's a larger system, you also have to think about a larger being 500 liter or 150 gallons, that a 50% water change adds an additional risk. You might keep your corals dry too long because you're ch replacing 50% of your water and some corals might be above the water line. If it's a small tank, you will quickly fill up and that's not the problem. Furthermore, make sure to have the light off if you're keeping your corals or coralline algae dry because high intensity light uh, will stress them a lot more when they're out of the water. Okay, I would also like to post a warning and the warning is about chemical warfare. All corals are toxic. Toxins are synthesized to fight over territory. And the problem is also very few corals have scientifically documented toxicity. We know they're toxic, but not exactly how it influences humans, to what extent. One of um, the uh, corals that actually are documented is the Vodactis uh, so this family of mushroom corals. And this one, if you consume it raw by mistake, uh, the result can be an untimely uh, death, so don't eat it. What happens is 8 to 36 hours, the patients go into shock with death coming from uh, pulmonary edema, the filling of lungs uh, with uh, fluid. And um, in this case, actually, I also need to mention, it's not the determined why the Rhodactis is this toxic, as the toxins are not known to be released in purpose of defeating competition. Uh, toxins can the toxins here can actually have a metabolic purpose and they just by mistake happen to be very toxic to uh, vertebrate anim animals but take care and that also means that when you when you work with corals make use gloves or uh, make sure to clean your hands thoroughly okay that said, about mushroom corals, in our next episode, we will be talking about uh, the euphilia, euphilia parancora. 
And um, now we'll do as we usually do, we'll transition into the podium phase where we have a look at uh, the mushroom core that I placed in the tank. And uh, stay tuned. Okay, so the project part about the first being the mushroom coral. You can see here in the bottom is the mushroom coral. It's a Rhodactis, it's bought as a Rhodactis indusinensis. Um, and it is well inflated. Now, actually, this is late in the evening, so the light has started to come down, so it's pulling down a little bit, and that is to be expected. What you also see in the reef is that I went ahead and introduced more corals over the last two, two and a half weeks. Uh, the first one was the Indusinensis, so I checked on this one that it uh, was indicating a healthy system, so it was inflating fully. Um, and it was, and then I continued with some further LPS on the bottom, and we will talk about them later. And then also the SPS. The reason why I stressed a little bit with pulling in corals here quite quickly was that the tank I was keeping the SPS, the corals on the top, um, there was not enough light so they started losing the color. So probably we'll see it, that the color of these ones will develop or hopefully we'll see that the coral color will develop. But we take that in a later episode. Now we look at the Indosinensis and yeah, it is looking healthy as expected. In the long run, I might pull this one out of this tank because I would prefer use the space for other corals. But I still wanted to begin with this one as it is a very beginner friendly type of coral. Be it the Rhodactis, Disosoma, or Icodea. Now, with that said, I'd like to thank you for your attention and wish you a pleasant evening. Bye bye.